Hello, my name is Steve Peacock from Dragon's Arm, uh, a training organization focusing on Agile and Agile teams. So how does Agile allow for change? Now what do we mean by that? Well the Agile manifesto itself states uh, one of the four main values of that manifesto shows responding to change over following a plan. So we value that responding to change even though we've got a plan. How do we do that? It gets even worse there. In principle number two, here's another one that says we're welcoming changing requirements, even late in development. So how do we cope a project where things are changing left, right and centre? How do we do that? Well, let's take you to a team. Now, this is a wonderful, highly motivated, self-organizing, agile team that builds stuff, gets stuff to done. Every iteration, and by iterations it's about, about every two weeks to a month, uh, the team works on their tasks that they have selected the previous, uh, the end of the last iteration. They've selected a lot of tasks that they are going to deliver this iteration. So they're working away on that. They don't like to be disturbed because they're working on their tasks. They've committed to those tasks. So obviously they don't want them to change. Now what happens if we do get a change? Well, there's a couple of people helping them relate to that task. The first one uh, over here is uh, got a number of role names. Uh, scrum Master, Iteration Manager, Team Coach, Team Lead, etc. But let's call them Scrum Master because that's becoming a standard. Uh, no matter which framework you're using, uh, Scrum Master is the standard for that sort of person there. But it's just a role name. They may have a different title up to them. It may only be a hat that they wear occasionally, being part of the team themselves, perhaps. But the Scrum Master has a focus that is inwards towards the team. So the Scrum Master is looking after the team, the Scrum Master is a servant leader to the team. The Scrum Master ensures the team is committed and there is nothing getting in the road of the team being able to deliver all those tasks that they've committed to. But we've also got another person that's related to this team and that is somebody called the Product Owner. Now I'm unsure of the word Product Owner because Generally a team works on more than one product and this person certainly doesn't own them all. So, uh, but it's become a standard uh, role name for that person. Now what that person does is that person works all day long on their list of all the things yet to be delivered in the project. Uh, that the team haven't yet started on. And to do that, they talk to all the different stakeholders and the customers and everybody else. And then they present the highest priority items every iteration to the team. And the team chooses those items and those high priority lists to present in the next iteration. So the team owns those tasks in the iteration. The product owner owns the list of tasks that the team have yet to take on. So what happens now? What happens now is there's this person here who is outside that team. They're worried about their concerns, not the team's concerns. Now, this person here has a wonderful idea. It's a brilliant idea. It's the best idea that that person has ever had. And they know how to get it done. They'll go straight to Sally and the team because Sally will be able to build this. It'll only take her a couple of days and there's no hassle, it'll all be done. However, we have a scrum master in that lock who's overlooking the team all the time and sees this person heading towards the team and cuts them off at the pass and says, let's introduce you to the product owner. The product owner will take all the details of this wonderful new idea you have, write them up and make sure that they're presented to the team in the correct way. And then the Scrum Master goes back away. Product owner uh, interviews that person, finds out all the details about it, writes it up, finds out what sort of a priority it, it has compared to other priorities that, that person might have. Donor can say, no, that doesn't sound like a good, wonderful thing the team is on, perhaps in another project. Or the, scrum, the product owner can say, yes, that's a good idea, let's add it to the list of tasks to do. 
They can also say, this is a fabulous idea. Let's put it right to the top of the list of tasks. And the team might, will be able to consider that as a good thing to do for the next iteration. But the concerned person uh, with the idea says, no, this is a wonderful idea. It should be delivered on, the re on next weekend for this reason. Now, the product owner might agree with that and might say, uh, they don't do it very often, but they might come across this idea of, yes, that's a very good idea. It should be done, and I can see the value in that. So what the product owner now does is they go and talk to the Scrum Master and says, Scrum Master, I have this very high priority item. I think it's a great item, but it should be delivered next weekend. What do you think? Now, the Scrum Master, of course, uh, understands that the product owner knows about priority and so they won't discuss that but they will take a look at the team now the scrum master now has to think about that what are they going to do about this team uh, how will that team be affected now it's possible the team could be negatively affected and they won't be able to deliver to what they've promised so there's one thought, in which case the Scrum Master can say, sorry, product owner, we've only got a couple of days left in this iteration. We'll do it next iteration. Or the other idea is the Scrum Master says, wow, this is great. If we do this, the team are going to come across as heroes, being able to deliver to requirements whenever needed. This is marvelous. If that happens, then there's another thought that happens. The product owner with this wonderful new idea on their list uh, is able to hand it to the scrum master and put it that goes on the list of things that the team does for this iteration. The team puts that list aside, puts the new one in. If the team accept it, the team will turn around to the product owner and say, OK, we can do that this sprint. What do you want dropped off this sprint? What do you want taken away so that the new item doesn't add to our workload? And that's a priority question. So that goes back to the product owner. The product owner takes off the appropriate uh, uh, equal value or equal um, estimated size uh, items and puts it back on the list ready for the next iteration. So that's how they can do that. They can work through and deliver that. The person with the wonderful idea gets their idea delivered and they're nice and happy.